Police are searching for the person who has been harassing and assaulting women at Temple University. There have been at least two incidents reported by students in the past week. Action News reporter John Paul live for us now in North Philadelphia with that story. John. Yeah, Shari, both incidents happened here along West Norris Street. In fact, he was caught on camera along that fence line right back there. And tonight, police need your help. The pictures are grainy and you can't see the man's face, but police say this man is the suspect in two incidents just blocks apart. According to Temple University, a student was touched inappropriately in the 1500 block of West Norris Street on Monday and another possible harassment incident not far from there in the 1800 block. Temple police didn't know about this one until recently. The area is teeming with students who are concerned about what happened. It's definitely scary because it is near campus and obviously a lot of people walk this way to go home. Temple University put out a statement today about this saying they have increased police and bike patrols in the area and they're following some leads. One group of students that we talked to today says safety is always on their mind. We never walk alone. We're always in a group at, of at least three. <laughs> Wait a second, man. Don't y'all got privilege? <laughs> I thought these... I thought these people had privilege, man. This is, I'm, I must be hearing this wrong. One group of students that we talked to today says safety is always on their mind. We never walk alone. We're always in a group at, of at least three. I feel safe on campus, but I never really want to walk around here by myself. Yeah. They pointed out the blue emergency call boxes and say they do think the university is doing their best to keep them safe. I feel like Temple's taking as much precaution as they can. Yeah like with what they have six abc let me let me um decode this for you let me translate this for you there are no solutions call boxes and say they do think the university is doing their best to keep them safe i feel like temple's taking as much precaution as they can yeah like with what they have. 6ABC confirmed the Special Victims Unit is handling the case from Monday, but it's unclear if they're also talking to someone from the case on October 4th. But students got the message today and they're using caution. I guess we definitely like have to be aware now and just know our surroundings. Now, police are asking anyone who may recognize that man or possibly had something similar happen to them to give them a call. In North Philadelphia, John Paul, Channel 6 Action News. You know what? That's interesting because that makes me think about something. The video I saw earlier, man. Today I wanted to show you guys, man. Um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, please take the $5 challenge via PayPal Cash App or the Super Chat. Um, let me see where it is. Is this it? Oh, yeah. This is it. E. I'm just saying my opinion. Right. You, yeah, think, but generally yeah. the opinion is going to be written that I saw her say dumb things. So, like, I written house was in possession of an Los Angeles happened to be one of them, and you know, I I talked about how I you know was assaulted. Well, I yeah, here it goes. This is this is Anna Kasparian, man. Shout out to Destiny, man. I've been kind of like binge watching Destiny videos the last couple of days, you know. Um. This is the stream I watched. It, everything for me started when I started getting gaslit on the crime wave. Uh -oh. And it's 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 really interesting to thing. talk about these various political issues in the abstract. But then once you personally experience something and once you see something happening in the country with your own two eyes and your political side is incessantly gaslighting you on it, it makes you question, well, can you what trust anything they say? No. Or what else are you guys gaslighting about? And that's what happened. So, you know, during the pandemic, there was absolutely a crime wave in the country, mostly in like major cities. Los Angeles happened to be one of them. And, you know, I, I talked about how I, you know, was assaulted. Well, actually, let me give you the details again, because there's an element to that story that I've never shared with Listen very closely. Listen very closely. With anyone that also explains where my head's at now. Mm -hmm. So, you know, as I was walking my dog one day, there were these two guys, they appeared to be homeless. They appeared to be on something. They looked like they might be messed out or something because they were kind of acting erratically. But you know, typically when I come across guys like that, if I ignore them, they usually fuck they off. They won't do anything. 
Right. That wasn't the case this time around. You know, oh. they're coming toward me. And Char my dog, Charlie, like he does his business. And as I bend over to pick up his business, one of them grabs me by my hips and just like with an erection and everything just starts like humping me like wow. right there in like broad daylight. And right. it was terrifying because like I didn't have any weapon with me, no taser, no pepper spray, nothing. Mm -hmm. And wow. and luckily the guy, he did that. And then he and his friend walk away while they're like laughing at me. And it, I felt so degraded, scared. And like the first thing I did is I called my husband and he came down and he's like, where are they? And he started looking for them. We couldn't find them. Um, the cops were, wouldn't come. Like we actually had an incident in front of our um, building like a few weeks prior to that. That was really scary. We called the police and the police people wouldn't come. Sometimes they just don't <laughs> give a fuck. Yeah. And wow. now in retrospect, I realized the reason why is because there was a shortage. Oh, and that's her I think that there was like an unofficial strike considering what happened in 2020 and all the protests. Mm -hmm. So so they just wouldn't show up. And I just didn't even think to call the cops because I'm like, what's the point? These guys have already like left and they're not going to be able to find them. But anyway, I, I opened up about that. And I also started opening up about, you know, just what the statistics were indicating in regard to crime and how it's obviously having a negative impact on all communities, but mostly the communities that like BLM minority and ones. leftists claim to care so much about the yep. disadvantaged uh, communities, you know, crime on the metro system in L.A. has been unbelievable. And she doesn't even sound like a young Turk anymore. She doesn't even sound like a young Turk. I don't know how long this is going to last, but she doesn't even sound like a young Turk anymore. majority of people who take the metro who take bus buses and public transportation or they're usually like working class immigrant workers they're usually you know blue collar workers who you know don't have enough money to buy a car for instance and so i was like why are you guys cool with just having these people deal with this kind of violence there was like a, a phase last year where people were literally being set on fire randomly on wow. buses Jeez. And that would get no attention, no news coverage, and it would infuriate me. And so when I opened up about what happened to me in my own neighborhood, um, what I thought was telling was how everyone, not everyone, but some people accused me of pushing racist stereotypes. But I had never, ever disclosed the race of these two individuals, ever. <laughs> See, now, remember yesterday when I was telling um, conservative that Everybody knows. Everybody knows. So when she came out and said, hey, man, I was bending over to pick up my dog's poop and some guy came over and grabbed me by the hip and started humping me and walked away laughing. Liberals accused her of being racist. Because everybody knows. Everybody knows. The liberals just instantly like, hey, man, that's racist, man. <laughs> well, she never said who did it. She never said the race of the perpetrator. She never said the race of the perpetrator. And, and liberals were calling her a racist. And she never even said the race of the perpetrator. Think about that. Everyone, not everyone, but some people accuse me of pushing racist stereotypes. But I had never, ever disclosed the race of these two individuals, ever. Yeah, mm -hmm. but they just assumed that these two guys were black. They wow. weren't black. They were two white guys. But like, I never shared that publicly because I didn't think the race really mattered. Right? What actually happened mattered, and I thought the. I just wanted to show you that because I wanted to let you know, show you that. Look, everyone knows. Liberals will try to act like, oh, they don't know what's going on, but. 
If you tell somebody, man, you got assaulted, they'll call you a racist. <laughs> hey, man, I got clunked upside the head today on the bus, man. You're pushing racist tropes. It's like, wait a second, I didn't even say who did it, man. <laughs> yeah, but like, every we all, everyone knows who did it. <laughs> Salute to Slim74. He said, sisters get harassed so bad by sun bums downtown Chicago. It's scary. <laughs> yeah, man. You ain't lying, man. Sisters be going through it, man. He put out a statement today about this, saying they have increased police and bike patrols in the area, and they're following some leads. One group of students that we talked to today says, ah, is My man said he still don't believe her. He said they were probably black, and she, she lied. I, I thought about that. That kind of crossed my mind, though. <laughs> I was like, it's been, they probably was black, and she just said that they wasn't, just so she... <laughs> they probably was. They probably was black man. She just tried to. She just tried to motherfucking keep her keep keep some woke cards, man. Keep some of her woke cards. That's funny, man. I was thinking that too. I was like, man, they probably was black. This bitch lying. Always on their mind. We never walk alone. We're always in a group at, of at least three. I feel safe on campus, but I never really want to walk around here by myself. Yeah. They pointed out the blue emergency call boxes and say they do think the university is doing their best to keep them safe. I feel like Temple's taking as much precaution as they can, yeah. like with what they have. 6ABC confirmed the special victims unit is handling the case from Monday, but it's unclear if they're also talking to someone from the case on October 4th. But students got the message today and they're using caution. I guess we definitely like have to be aware now and just know our surroundings. Now, police are asking anyone who may recognize that man or possibly had something similar happen to them to give them a call. In North Philadelphia, John Paul, Channel 6 Action News.